Maud Wagner was definitely the accidental pioneer. Born in 1877 in Emporia, Kansas, she was a skilled acrobat, aerialist and contortionist who worked the travelling sideshow circuit for the first part of her life. At the age of 27, she was performing as an aerialist at the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair when she met someone who interested her in more ways than one. She struck a deal with tattoo artist Gus Wagner that she would go on a date with him if he taught her how to tattoo. Gus himself had nearly 300 tattoos and had adopted the moniker the most artistically marked up man in the US. He would go on to collect an additional 500 tattoos over the remainder of his life. Although the first electric tattoo machine had been invented and patented in 1891, Gus still chose to work with the simpler but more arduous and apparently less painful stick and poke called hokey pokey method. This hand etching technique he taught the curious Maud. Now, as well as being able to express her artistic designs, Maud began to grow a collection of tattoos on her own body. Her personal tattoos were typical of the period and included patriotic designs and depictions of trees and animals such as butterflies, lions, monkeys, snakes and horses. She also had her own name inked onto her left arm. Maud and her now husband were eventually covered in tattoos and they became popular circus attractions on that basis alone. They are thought to have earned as much as $200 a week, which is about $2,000 in today's money, simply for displaying their inked skin to the public. In 1910, their daughter Lativa was born, but interestingly, Maud forbade Gus from ever subjecting her to his artistic creations. The pair are credited with introducing tattoo artistry to urban life, away from the coastal cities and towns where the practice had begun. The Wagners were in fact two of the last tattoo artists to work by hand, still shunning the aid of modern tattoo machines, and Maud was the country's first known female tattoo artist. While many of the upper class were now having tattoos placed discreetly around their bodies, the press was starting to drum up a warning that tattoos could spread venereal diseases. With tattoos increasingly hard to obtain, Gus and Maud Wagner were doing a roaring trade. The couple performed tattoos on both their circus colleagues and keen audience members, inking nearly 2,000 people over just a few months. Their daughter Lativa revealed in an interview with the Dallas Morning News that most of her parents' customers requested tattoos depicting their pets, dogs and cats as well as lovers' hearts, butterflies, and especially birds. She added that their tattoo work was proving so lucrative that her father probably earned as much at the fair as a bank president. Maud Wagner was recognised as the first female tattoo artist in the United States and in demand. Together, she and her husband would work in vaudeville houses, amusement arcades, at county fairs, and in Wild West shows. The versatile pair could pivot between working as tattooists, tattooed attractions and circus performers. However, Maud and Gus could blend in whenever they wanted to, particularly when at home in their Kansas neighbourhood. The conservative, all-concealing clothing of that time effectively masked their embellished skin. Their daughter Lativa was to continue Maud's legacy. She started tattooing others when she was just nine years old. After Gus was tragically struck by lightning in 1941, Maud relaxed her ban on Lativa having tattoos. However, the by then 31-year-old decided that if her father couldn't do her tattoos like he had done her mother's, then nobody would. She remained one of a very few career tattooists to have completely bare skin for the rest of her life. Maud Wagner is recognised as having broken some important barriers in the early 20th century. Not only was she the first female tattoo artist in America, but by also covering her own skin with tattoos, she was seen to take ownership of her body in an era when American women could not even vote. As a trailblazer, she also helped pave the way for other women to take on these challenges.
One of these was Mildred Hull, who became known as the Queen of the Bowery. Born in 1897, Hull began her career in the circus as an exotic dancer and over time evolved into a tattooed lady, then a tattoo artist in her own right. She herself had been tattooed by Gus Wagner, but learned the tattooing trade without any mentor. By 1939, she was the owner of her own tattoo shop called the Tattoo Emporium in a space she shared with a barber. She was also one of very few female tattoo artists working at the Bowery in New York. Another notable female tattooist who followed in Maud's footsteps was Ethel Martin, a circus performer turned tattooist whose stage name was Lady Viola. She had portraits of American presidents tattooed on her chest and images of popular figures such as Charlie Chaplin on her left thigh. Artoria Gibbons, born in 1893, was a working class woman who had herself tattooed as a last resort when she fell on hard times and then found herself able to earn good money as a result. She married the tattooist Charles Gibbons and the pair travelled throughout America in the 1920s, working as a team in the circus business. Her tattoos depicted artworks and a portrait of George Washington. Now women make up at least a quarter of tattoo artists in the US and tattoos have become more popular and accepted over recent years. For a long time they probably carried a social stigma, but the technology also has many uses, the most obvious being forensic identification. The oldest historical record of successful identification enabled by a tattoo dates back to the 11th century. King Harold II of England was slain in battle and was reported to have been identified by the words Edith and England tattooed above his heart. Thanks to the identifying inscription, the monarch was buried with the full regalia befitting his rank. Before the advent of photography, preserved remains provided almost the only opportunity to document a tattoo in detail and retain it for later identification. In the history of Western tattooing, the practice of involuntary tattoos used during the Second World War remains a deep stain in our awareness. However, a strange anomaly has helped in a small way to bring justice. Whereas the concentration camp prisoners in places like Auschwitz were forced to wear numbered tattoos, members of the SS wore their blood group tattooed on their upper arms. The unintended effect was that, after the war, what had been placed as useful medical information resulted in an irreversible identification mark. Amongst its helpful applications is the potential of tattoo technology to improve self-esteem in burn patients and women who have had mastectomies. One quirky application has seen tattoo subject Tim Steiner kept in a job. In 2007, the Swiss citizen agreed to allow Belgian conceptual artist Wim Delvoy to use his back as a human canvas for an elaborate tattoo. In 2008, the tattoo, entitled Tim, was sold to a German art collector for €150,000. The purchase entitled the owner to the right to lend, sell and bequeath Tim Steiner as a loan object and to retain and preserve his skin after his death. The deal also meant that Tim has to sit, still and silent, in museums around the world for hours on end. This he has now been doing for more than 10 years. <laughs>